Welcome to this Allerton Associates Technology Training Tip of the Month. This month we'll be talking about using animation triggers in PowerPoint. All right, so I've got PowerPoint open. I've got a very small presentation with two slides. I have already applied animations to some of the text and objects on these slides. The assumption here is that you do already know how to apply animations, have them trigger on your mouse click during a presentation, or perhaps set them to start after or with the previous animation. So if I click the Animations tab, and then you look at the slide, you can see some animation sequence numbers. If I click within the text, then you can see that I've got a zoom animation applied to the text. Uh, I've got it on click right now. If I click the picture, there's a zoom animation and it's set to start after previous. Now to see the true sequence of these, I'm gonna bring up the animation pane and you can see the picture animation comes first. So really after previous just means that it animates immediately upon this slide being displayed or, or just slightly thereafter. And then each of these bullets is on my click, which is pretty standard for text. You introduce it as you click the mouse when you're ready to see that bullet point. Now I'm gonna go to slide number two and there's a picture here. And actually, if I move the picture over just a bit, you can see there's a table behind it. So let me undo that move. But I do already have on the picture an animation effect and exit effect. So during the show, when I click, that picture will actually smoothly fly out to the right and uncover the table. Now, that's set on click as well. The thing about any of these animations is that they will happen. Whether it's on my click or after or with the previous animation, there's no way to skip them. They're there and they're going to happen during the show. I'm going to go to slideshow view for you. Okay, so see how that picture just came in automatically, uh, but it had a nice effect of zooming in. But here I click, there's larger bins, click, click, click. And that's a pretty standard slide. Now when I click, I go to the next slide. And now when I click to trigger the exit animation, the picture moves over and there's the table. And then I click and the show is over. So what we're talking about here though is with this slide number two, what if I wanted the option of triggering the exit animation of the picture, meaning that for some of my audiences, that table might not even be relevant, so I don't even want to show it. And maybe it's a matter of time. I don't have time to show it. But for some reason, I don't want that to be automatic. I want it available if I want to do it, but not trigger it also if that's my choice. And that's the idea of an animation trigger. So what I'm going to use is this coming soon text. It's a piece of word art that we added to the slide. A trigger can really be anything. If I go up to the insert tab here. Notice there's a bunch of shapes. I can insert a shape and even write text on it and make that the trigger. There's even some buttons that actually look like buttons and it might make sense to make one of those a trigger, you know, that says click here to show table. But the thing is too with this, the way I've got it set up is the audience wouldn't even know that was there if I ignored it. So having a button is not necessarily a bad thing, but if the button's there, people might expect you to click it. This is a little more transparent. Words coming soon are there. They make sense for the slide, but the audience will never know that if I clicked it, something would happen unless I click it. So I'm going to use this text. Now, the text is already there. So the first step is to identify the name of this object. You actually have to know its name. PowerPoint gives a name to everything you insert on the slide. You have no control over that name. It's just an automatic thing. But here's one of the ways you can check out what the name is. I'm going to go up to the Home tab. I'm going to go over to Select and choose Selection Paint. And that pops up over here next to my animation pane. And now when you click something, like here, if I click the picture, see how it says that's picture placeholder five. And if I click here, the one for all, that's title one. So I'm gonna click in coming soon and it's rectangle eight. Again, I can't change that. That's just what PowerPoint assigned. But now I know this is rectangle eight. So when I click rectangle eight, I want the picture's animation to trigger the exit effect that is already there. So now I know the name of the object. So everything's in place for me to trigger the animation. The animation's already there, being right now triggered by my mouse click. I have an object that I want to be the trigger object, and I know that its name is Rectangle 8. So now what I'm going to do is go up to Animations. I'm going to click on the picture, the animated object. And by the way, you can add more than one animation to an object. Like I could have an animation for this picture to enter and emphasize and exit. So if you have multiple animations applied to the same object, be sure you choose the precise one in the animation pane that you're using the trigger for. I made it easy here. I have one single animation. So I've got it selected. Up in the advanced animation group on the animations tab, you have trigger. And note that I have on click of, and there's all the objects on the slide. 
So see, if I looked in the selection pane, which I did a moment ago, there's rectangle eight, and I know that that's the one I want to be the trigger. Now, before I actually click that, though, let me just point out on bookmark, note it's not active, but let me just explain that where you might use that, and it's really cool, is I could have a video on this slide and set bookmarks in the video. Now, that's kind of beyond the focus of what we're doing here, but if I did that, each bookmark, when the video played and it hit that bookmark, that could trigger an animation. So I could have a video playing here and have text popping up that goes with those parts of the video. The text is being triggered by the bookmarks in the video. So not available here because I have no video with bookmarks, but just pointing out that's something you might want to explore after you see what this does. So I'm going to go to on click of, and we already identified coming soon as rectangle eight. So I'm going to click rectangle eight. And that's all there is to it. Now this exit effect is not going to be triggered automatically. I absolutely have to click coming soon if I want to trigger it. Note it's listed under a heading that says trigger and it lists rectangle eight as the trigger. So now let's go ahead and play this in slideshow view. Here we go, slideshow. So of course this one, the bullets are still clicking. I'm still clicking here to get these bullets. Okay, but now I'm clicking to go to the next slide. So let's say this is an audience that I decide, yeah, I want to show the table. So I wiggle the mouse, the mouse pops up, I point it coming soon, I click it, table's uncovered. And then I can click to move on to the next slide, or in this case, that's the end of the show. So let me hit escape. Now let me show you what it's like if I decide not to trigger the animation. Click, click, click click, there's my bullets, click, here's the next slide. Now let's say I decide I don't want to show the table to this particular audience or we don't have time for it. So without clicking on coming soon, I just click to move on to the next slide. See, it never happened. So that's the idea of the animation trigger. So you have control over it each time you give the presentation. Thanks for watching this Ellert & Associates Technology Training Tip of the Month. To learn more about our classes, please visit us at www.ellerttraining.com.